How's it going, guys and girls? Sorry, I was in a training session. We're getting a new server for our multimedia department. Thing's a monster. So I don't know if I'll have any uh, help as far as um, making notes and answering questions. I'm not sure if Hank's going to be able to jump off of that call or not. But hey, yeah, of course he is. There he is. He's going to multitask. Good luck with that. <laughs> All right, first order of business. We have another contest going on, this time for an AGV helmet. I remember looking it up last week and it is extremely nice. And I believe you have until either the 15th or the 18th to win. But if you head over to the website now, it should be on the front page or the, the, the beginning page. And if you use the code John3PM, you'll get an additional 100 entries. So why don't you go check that out? Yep, of course, Hank's backed me up as usual. As usual, Enter to win an AGV Tur Modular Helmet with an MSRP of $770. Runs through the 19th. So go check it out. It is, uh, AGV, AGV makes some fantastic helmets and definitely going to be worth your time. Just use that code JOHN3PM for 100 more entries. All right, let's swing around to whatever I missed last week. All right, Mark had asked me about the his 09 YFC450R, and you know, he asked if he needed to replace the crank. I told him, no, you probably don't. I never heard anything else uh, from you on that one, uh, Mark, as far as needing to measure the uh, the in play of the uh, connecting rod. That would be the only thing I would be concerned with. Other than that, I just I'd let it ride. Philly D6489 had asked me, hey, John, I have a 2005 Honda ST1300. Just wondering, while riding it the other day, I pressed the button to raise the windshield. When I went to press it to lower it, it did not go down. Any ideas would, uh, any, any ideas why would be greatly appreciated. Thanks in advance. John, I've only had to work on one of those. And what I found, the, the problem was on mine, there is a limit switch. I can't remember where it is, but it's somewhere on the window track or the windshield track for the down. And if that is dirty, if there is anything holding it in, I think it's just a small micro switch. That'll, it thinks it's already down, a lot of logic there, and it won't let it come down. So you know, look for that limit switch and see if it's either binding or if there's something on top of it. I mean, I've even heard of people having you know debris get down there and gunk it up where it didn't want to uh, let the, the windshield come back down. So go give that a shot and see what, uh, see what it does or look for that anyway. Cody is a, had asked me, my solenoid clicks and starter doesn't make any noise. Occasionally I hear the starter make a weak turn, but nothing consistent, mainly just a click from the solenoid. Does this mean the starter is bad? I reflect, okay, I replace the battery and check the fuse and all that is good. I would be leaning toward the starter. I'm really supply, surprised it didn't pop your main fuse if it's that drawing it that bad badly. But I have seen solenoids where you, you hear them click, but the contacts are so dirty on the inside where it's really not sending the voltage. So if you would put a multimeter on there on that other side and when or, or the side going to the starter, when you hit the starter button, See what your voltage drops down to. I mean, if it goes insanely low, like, you know, eight volts, yeah, that's one hell of an amperage load that it's trying to cram through that starter, and that would indicate a bad starter winding. So my initial uh, inclination is to say, yes, starter. F. Catchaway had asked me, I just re recently bought myself a 2013 Scrambler 850HO XP riding along and suddenly felt like it governed out and the engine light came on. Started to sputter as uh, continued to give it throttle and sputtered again. Had to idle home. Fluids are good. Filter was dirty. Okay. What could be that problem or something different? All right. You didn't tell me which filter was dirty, but if it's your air filter, and uh, there's a chance that uh, you may, may have. Um, Fouled, uh, fouled out the spark plug because if it can't get enough air and it's um, thinking it's supposed to send X amount of air or X amount of fuel to mix with that air and it doesn't have enough, well, that's going to 
richen up your circuit, and then, of course, foul out your spark plug. So I'd say clean the filters, pop another spark plug in it, and then see what you've got. Um, anything beyond that, I would really wonder if the, um, the, the throttle position uh, sensor is out of whack. Could be. But I'd start with the simple stuff first and then work my way to the other later as the situation would dictate. <clears throat> All right. Um, pajama, pajama sun. <laughs> All right. My 2008 CBR 1000 R does not start because no spark coming through. Where should I turn to fix that problem? Well, that, that's kind of a wide open door there. Um, it could be a lot of different things because um, there's a couple of different circuits that are going to keep it from... Um, Turning, um, turning over. One of those would be the clutch switch. Another would, uh, could be the gear indicator. Another could be your kickstand, whether or not it, it thinks it is up or down. So there's several things coming up uh, that could be the problem. But um, start with the basics. I mean, go back in, check your plugs, make sure that they're not fouled out or anything like that, and then just start working your way out from there. Um, we've got a couple of different videos. Help, my ATV or my motorcycle won't start, and you can just go through the basic trouble, troubleshooting steps to at least get some of the problems or the potential problems either verified or eliminated. All right, let's see what we've got going on for today in the, in the real world or the current world. How's that? Yeah, we got a few people. Oh, Philly D. Um, with the, the windshield, I already answered that one. Well, I'm glad you came back. Hopefully that points you in the right direction. Let me know. Ryan Brooks, hey John, do you have any videos on rebuilding the transmission on a 2016 90cc Raptor? Need help on that rebuild, thanks. We haven't had to crack open one on the, uh, on the Raptor yet. That thing's usually bulletproof. What went wrong? I'm, I'm just curious because all my years at the dealership level, I've never seen a transmission fail on uh, any of the, the smaller Yamaha stuff, uh, the, the 90 Raptor or the Grizzly or you know any of those machines. So I'll be curious to know exactly what went wrong on yours. Hmm. All right, Jeffrey Mayer bought a 1983 Honda XR350R. Cool machine. It hasn't run since 2002. <laughs> fuel tank was drained okay before it was stored what would you do to it before hitting the trails basically i'd be looking at anything made out of rubber um that it probably needs to be replaced so that could be your your suspension points your the, the points on the shocks looking at your fork seals i mean it may work for a little a little bit right now but eventually um after being sitting after sitting up for that long yeah you're going to need to go through it Certainly going to need to replace that air filter because it may look that it's, I think that one has a foam air filter. It probably looks okay, but I bet you if you touch it, your finger is going to go straight through it. And you don't want to suck all that into your carburetor. Um, the, the fuel was drained, but chances are you'll still need to uh, clean up that carb a little bit. A little bit of the uh, whatever was not drained out of the carb may have just a little bit left in there. Other than that, change the oil, go ahead and put in a new plug, and it's a Honda, man. So chances are it'll fire right off. Cool that you're working with an older one like that. Let us know how it goes with it. I'll, I'll, be, I'll be curious to see uh, how that ends up. Did I skip over somebody? No, I didn't. Okay. Dennis has asked me, thanks for the vids of the CR, CR450R. CR I'm uh, rebuilding my CRF450R 2003 with the help of your videos in the manual. Greetings from the ne ne Netherlands. Well, hello, sir. Well, good grief. Uh, yeah, that, that, was a, that was a fun build. There was not a single nut or bolt that I didn't touch on that machine. Uh, we, we dove into the deep end of the pool with it and uh, actually gave it away and. uh Sometimes the, uh, the winter, he'll drop into those, uh, into these uh, live at threes. You still enjoying that machine? Or have you gotten better at, at starting it? They are a bit of a challenge. But once they get going, <laughs> get out of the way. 
All right, Pat has asked me, uh, 2003 LT80, clicking when trying to start, new battery and solenoid, any ideas? Well, you've eliminated a bunch of it right there. I mean, in, when you go to start, it is clicking. So you're telling me the solenoid is in, engaging. So the only thing left in, from what I gather is going to be your starter itself. So kind of expensive, but hey, that's probably what it is. Christopher is asking me, hello, John. I have a Polaris Razor 900S EPS. Love that machine. I bought one for our corral, and I'm just having a hard time selling it because <laughs> I have to go test it every so often. Uh, what's your question? Uh, that doesn't have any power. Uh-oh, fuel pressure is fine. How do I make sure wiring to the injectors are, are good? Process of elimination. Um, disconnect them. See what they're doing. See if one one or of uh, one of the other cylinders drops out. And it's funny you mentioned that, Christopher, because uh, our unit that we have here, I'll, I've let it sit up a little bit too long, and I think it is having an injector issue. It'll sit there and run fine, and then it's like somebody pulls the spark plug. So I'm having to. I need to go figure out whether it's a the ignition system or B, which I think it's going to be is going to be the injector. I think I've got one that's hanging up. So who knows? We may be working on a parallel course here on basically the same machine. I may put a little bit of time in on it at the beginning of the week. That way, um, whatever I find, I'll relay uh, uh, what, I, what I determine on my machine or the owner's machine. I don't own it. Uh, what I find out to be wrong with it because, yeah, it sounds like we're doing about the same thing. Just for kicks, uh, probably I don't think it's going to be the case on mine. But if it's if yours is just consistently down on power, when you're pulling the plugs, go ahead and do a compression test just to make sure. The, well, it'll give you at least an indication as to whether or not the mechanical side of things are healthy or not. I mean, hopefully you haven't bent a valve or blown out a couple of the rings or anything uh, dramatic like that. Hmm. Grammy Sweets, how are you doing, my dear? I miss you, good looking. Oh, you are bored. Happy Friday. I wish you could ride around in that bad boy behind you. Also, happy Friday, Gail. That thing. <laughs> you noticed it's back in here. There's nothing wrong with it. But that thing, I finally have driven it for the first time, uh, other than just moving it from uh, studio to studio. We have a fair fair amount of... Um, land that i can, uh, can that i can run it on you would think but it was scary how fast that far end of the field was on the front of that machine just like that and i haven't even really gotten into the tune on it yet i've, I've just been running some log files with it and i hadn't even started to turn up the, bu the boost or mess with the uh the timing or anything of the ignition timing advancing it any further but even as it sits straight out of the box it is that far away from pulling that front end up, that third gear when that, when it kicks in, it just, it's fast. <laughs> it's fast. Mm. Oh yeah, well, Paul, I just uh, answered that. Okay, I see something back in the shop again. How was the ride? One word, fast. <laughs> uh, Ron came back, John on the Raptor 90, the bearings, oh boy. And, uh, and part of the casing inside exploded. Yeah, if a bearing let go on that, it's going to take the casing with it. it no, I'm sorry that that's happening or has happened to you. Did it lose some um, oil in it? Just curious. Dennis uh, came back. It gave me a first prize. Uh, it gave me a first prize last year on a club competition. I noticed later the cam chain skipped then. Nothing got damaged. 56 hours on the piston and it came out as new. Wow. What, what, what were we talking about? Oh, okay. Yeah, your, your 450 bill. Well, cool. Man, it jumped timing. It didn't bend anything. Whew. Lucky. <laughs> you need to pay, play the lotto, dude. Uh, that, that, yeah, it, it, uh, gave you, it did a favor for you, no doubt. Johnny is asking me, I recently built an Outlander 400 new crank rings cam chain cam chain now it's back together but the gears aren't working correctly uh, p and r works but it still stays in reverse on the end doesn't take h but l works 
Johnny, is that just the adjustment on the shifter itself? I mean, are we sure that we've got it synced up correctly? Because it, it sounds like, uh, I don't think what you're describing, I don't think you could have put it together to cause what it's doing. I, I just wonder if it's uh, that shifter adjustment. Uh, go back and check that first before you dive back, back into the case. Uh, nobody likes to do that. Preston Coates, I have a 2005 Yamaha Blaster. It's always in and out of the shop. Um, last trip to the shop, my, my guy redid every wiring harness, brand new coal stutter sparks, et cetera. It ran perfect for the two, uh, for two weeks now. Okay, was it still okay, Preston, or is it still having an issue? And you didn't tell me uh, what the initial issue was, but I assume it has something to do with your, your uh, your charging and or uh, ignition part of the system. Hmm. Uh, Ryan came back. Yes, lost a little bit of oil in the trans. Whew. Well, I, I hate that uh, it did that. Oh, Preston came back. Sputters out and dies after the first five minutes of writing. All right. All right. There, there's there's one thing, and I go to this one often because I've been caught so many times because of it. Have you checked the check? There's no pun intended. Have you looked at the check valve going into your fuel tank venting system? Sometimes it could be actually in the vent tube itself. Other times it is built into the cap. And if it builds up a vacuum, well, guess what? It's going to starve it, and, and it'll kill it. And it'll have you chasing, chasing all these electrical gremlins that don't exist. So loosen up your cap, go for a ride, see what happens. Maybe surprised. I hope it's that, but hey, you will be the first one that that's uh, that's gotten been uh, gotten by that one. This got me a couple of times, unfortunately. Paul came back. Have you posted any of the videos in the build behind you? Don't suppose uh, we can get a walk around. I actually. Um, Tracy has finished up the the bottom end. I know that it's live, and this week I just reviewed the um, the doing the the head, just getting the valves installed. But that is as far as we have gone so far. But yeah, when that thing is completely finished, I'm gonna do what we're gonna call a, a fireside chat out of all the different modifications that I've done to it as far as adapting the wiring harness to accept a 2019 uh, frame, which of course has the twin uh, twin radiator fans and also relocating it to the back. I mean, uh, all, a lot of things had to uh, get changed up for that. And for better or for worse, um, I, I welded in a frame strengthening kit from Texterra Tech. And then we did the uh, the roll cage, which I just welded in a couple of weeks ago. So, But at any rate, I'm going to walk you around and show you everything I did to it. And when we're actually done with it, <laughs> we still haven't even done the design to know what color plastics uh, that I want to order yet. That'd be a, that would be a good one for next week. What base color should I go with? I mean, originally it was a 50th anniversary 2016, which of course was white and yellow. So we're going to go all one color and then, um, then add to it with a whole lot of uh, graphics and or a wrap on it. So what do y'all think? Hank, why don't you do a, uh, next week, do a, um, a poll and uh, see, which, uh, see which way people want, want us to go with it. My thoughts, all white, and we wrap the white. Uh, that worked out well for that 450R that we did. Um, Lee Smith did an amazing job. Well, she'd answer his emails, love to use them again. Come on, man, you're ghosting us. <laughs> but I digress. Moesku, respect. How much did it cost? How much it cost to repair a CBR 929 engine? Um, I buy a 2000 Fireblade. The engine is broken. It, you got to give me some more information as far as uh, what it would take. Uh, what is wrong with it? I mean, we're talking about having to replace the block here or just doing piston and rings and uh, recoding the cylinders and then maybe some head work. It, it all depends. Um, Old an older one like that, you may want to, well, may want to consider just a uh, another engine assembly that may not be as broken as yours. But hey, I've never been one to shy away from an engine build. 
I've got a ZX10 that's been sitting on a um, a pallet for like three years with a hole in the block, <laughs> much to Tracy's uh, uh, chagrin. Oh, we may rebuild it. What am I going to do with it? Hell, I don't know. <laughs> Why not build it? All right. I already answered that one. Um, Paul said, do you have the original photo uh, so that we can have a vision of what would be a drastic change? Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, I'm sure I do, but um, it, it's just the, the standard, you know, 50th anniversary. I, I can't post it in the chat. I wish I could. It's one thing I don't like about the live stream from, um, from uh, YouTube. I want to be able to drop in pictures, but uh, what I need to do is use that machine, that sling app to where I could actually do a split screen that y'all could see and I could drop them in there. Hint, hint. Tracy's been trying to get me to do that for a while. <laughs> but yeah, it's just the standard 2000, uh, 2016. Uh, Johnny came back. Yeah, I removed the shifter shaft completely and manu manually rotated the shift shaft and did the same thing. It must be something inside, but what? Since I did not get into the gears and the rebuild I, dang, John, I wish I had more knowledge of that particular machine. Hank, if you would make a note of Johnny's machine, and uh, I gather a lot from when I open up just the uh, the manuals or you know, the exploded diagrams, maybe get a picture of, of uh, what it should be and how what could have changed to make it do what you're describing. So if you would make a Hank, make notes of uh, exactly what his is doing, that way I can put some thought into it because questions uh, as in depth as that, you know, a little bit tougher for me to just rattle off the top of my head. I have to put a little bit of thought into it. So, but Hey, that's what, that's how I start off each one of these is anything I couldn't answer or needed to research. I do that during the week most of the time and that's what i start off with at the beginning of it so uh let me get all that information digest it a little bit and then maybe i can come up with a, a direction for you to look into uh, ryan says you want to do a video on it i'll send i'll send it out um other than a little bit of oil coming out of the trans uh, i'd look for any of the damage in the engine myself yeah, if you were close enough, I'd say, sure, bring it on. <laughs> and Paul's saying thanks for the uh, video playlist. You got it. Not a problem. Well, all right, guys. I caught up with you, and I guarantee you that they are still doing the in-service training on, the, uh, uh, on our new server, the multimedia department server. And, Hank, you're supposed to be in there with – well, I'm going to drag you back in there with us. Well, I am going to go ahead and sign off, get back onto that meeting, and uh, try to take some good notes. Well, everybody, thanks for coming by, spending a little time with us. Uh, but before I leave, I do want to say go to the website, register to win that AGV helmet, use John 3 p.m. to get 100 extra bonus entries. So everybody have a great weekend, a great week, and God willing, we will see you next Friday at 3. Y'all take care. <laughs>